The following program was made possible by the friends and partners of FEMC Taft Media Ministry. This morning I come to you, and I'm going to try to stand up here because this mic seems to work up here for some reason, and maybe the Holy Spirit's wanting me to stand up here behind this pulpit, and and uh, I have a really hard time with that because I like to move around and talk, but we will try that. But the sermon this morning, the title is, Why Do You Want the Holy Spirit? And I told you this month that we're going to be talking and directing and coaching and teaching about the Holy Spirit, the forgotten God. So this morning, I'm going to read the scripture for you, and I, I need you to open up to Acts chapter 8, verses 9 through 24, and I'll be reading out of the New International Version, and uh, just be prepare yourself, open yourself to hear, to feel, to see, to know the Holy Spirit this morning. Prepare yourself. Pray for this this morning. That the Holy Spirit will move in you this morning. Because that is our goal. Acts chapter 8, 9 through 24. And actually I'll be just going through 23. But 8 verses 9 through 23. Now, for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great. And all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and ex exclaimed, This man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere. Astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that there that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying of the, on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said to them, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, Peter answered, May your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for you have such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. The one thing I, I want you to see today is why should you want the Holy Spirit? So Simon, and I'll talk a little bit this morning and, and try to have a little bit of fun with this, but Simon is there, and, and he's hearing about God, but his main attraction is he has the ability 
to do magic. He has the ability to attract people. He has the ability to distract people. Fame, or claim to fame was that, that he could entertain. Is that what he was wanting when he asked for them to lay hands on him so that he could have that power? This is all gimmicks. The Holy Spirit is not a gimmick. The Holy Spirit is what we're calling upon us to do and to be a part of God's work. It is the blessing that God has given us when He took Jesus from us. We don't need the gimmicks. We need the Holy Spirit. The first step in reversing our neglect of the Holy Spirit is desiring to see Him at work in and through us. Now I think we're a little bit harsh on Simon when he was sitting there, oh please, please, touch me. Put that on me. Because I think God was working with him. I think, I think the, the, the Spirit was working on him, but I think his, his mindset was a little bit distorted. Because he could feel that presence. He could feel that, that desire to know what he wanted. But so many times, even in our days now, we have people that think that they can come into the church and pay for their salvation. They can pay to have that Holy Spirit. They think they can do and receive, and they can't. The only way that we can receive our sanctification, our salvation, our heavenly home is through God Himself. Through the sacrifice of Jesus Himself. Through the Holy Spirit being laid upon us and us accepting that. That is the only way that we can make it to heaven and be saved. Is not through payment, not through work, not through anything else. It's through by accepting the cross, picking it up and carrying it and living the life that God wants you to live. And I absolutely loved the song you said earlier. You sang earlier. We all have a gift. God has given us all a gift. And the Holy Spirit will move you and use you and direct you with the gifts that God has given you. Obviously, my gift is, is the ability to talk, because I do that all the time, and I to everybody. But that's okay, because God's given me that gift to where I can do that, and I want to do that amongst other things that He's given me. So what we have to go through this morning and realize, is He working in your life? Are you allowing Him to work in your life? Well, if He is working in your life, to self-check yourself, how is He working in your life? Can you depict to me or to anybody else or to God himself, how is he working in your life? How are you using the gifts and the Holy Spirit in your life to transform others for the kingdom of heaven? If you're not transforming others to the kingdom of heaven, if you're not talking about your, your story, if you're not talking about how the, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ saved you and you have learned that you, are, you need to be saved and that you're going to go to heaven and you're not telling others, then, then what are you doing with your gifts? And if you're doing all of those, can anyone else see what you're doing and what's working in your life? 
Because with this whole transformation, it comes to you through the Holy Spirit. You feel something. You sense something. You need something. You want something. You ask for something. You open that door. God enters your life. And then he transforms you into something. But when you transform into something, people see what you're being transformed into. People will know you are a Christian by your, by your love. By your works, by your desires, by what you're telling them, by what you're doing for them, what, how you present your life. People will know whether you are a fake or if you're not. God is moving in your life. God has given you a gift. Are you accepting that gift of the Holy Spirit? In Acts 8, chapter 9 through 23, Simon used his magic arts to amaze people, to convince people he was someone great. But when he seen the miracles performed through Philip, he was amazed how inadequate he truly was. He knew something supernatural was happening. He could tell the difference between magic and God. Folks, you see on Facebook and these shows and you see all these things where, where all of a sudden, you know, sleight of hand, you can see the water and all of a sudden it's gone. Woo! How did they do that? I hate to be the bearer of bad news for you, but it's called magic. It's not real. But what I'm explaining to you this morning, God and Jesus and resurrection and crucifixion and the Holy Spirit is as tangible as this water bottle. Some people say, well, I can't hear him. Are you praying hard enough? Well, I don't feel nothing. Are you listening? God will talk and work through you through the Holy Spirit. You can be moved. You will be directed. But you have to devote and pick up your cross and listen. He knew something was supernatural was happening. He could tell the difference between magic and God. He wanted the power he was witnessing. How many of you have sat back and watched something transform in front of you? Somebody transform in front of you and say, Oh, I want that. How many were you led to, to Christ from seeing something or feeling something in that magnificent way? Oh, I want that. I want that power. I want, I want that. I got to have that. I want to feel that. Well, you've got to be careful. Because if you look at his response in verses 18 through 19, he was willing to pay money to have that power. But in today's world, money doesn't buy you everything like it, you think it does. We need to question our own motives and how we and why we would want the power of God. Do we just desire that spirit and that knowledge and that, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I go to church. Yes, yes that, that second pew from the left, that's my pew. I sit there every, I've sat there every Sunday morning since I was born. Yes, yes, you know, yes, I go to Bible study. Yes, yes, oh, yes. I give, uh, I give offering every Sunday. Uh, do you pay all your money? No, well, you know, yeah. Have you led anybody to Christ? Uh, well, you know, I'm just, I'm a little bit intimidated to talk to people. Have you fed anybody? Well, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm an, I'm an introvert to get out of my house. Have you loved anybody? Well, you know, that's just a little bit hard. But, you know, I, I am a, I'm a Christian. I, I believe in God. I believe I'm going to heaven. But are you doing anything? Folks, I'm posing some hard questions this morning because I don't want you to fall in this trap. Do we just desire the claim to fame or the Spirit? You might be willing to give up your worldly possessions, are you? You never know what God's going to ask you to do. 
You never know if God's going to call you over to the mission fields. You bet. You never know if God's going to tell you to, to leave your house and your possessions and carry what possessions you can to move on and, and preach. You don't know what God's going to call you to do. But in Acts 20, Peter responded, May your money be condemned to hell. I'm going to repeat that. May your money be condemned to hell along with you, because you believed you could buy God's gift with money. How many times in our life do we think we can get out of situations or we can do things by persuading our way through or buying our way through or any of that? The only way you can get God's gift was through His sacrifice of his son the blood he shed for us and by you giving up your life to our father you can't buy your way into this you can't just do what you want to do you have to take up your cross give up of yourself and follow god why do you want the Holy Spirit? Your answer really, truly makes a difference. Why do you want the Holy Spirit? Simon wasn't satisfied with seeing the Spirit work. work. He wanted to control it. He wanted to own it. He was going to sacrifice whatever amount of money that it was going to take for him to own that ability. You do not control God. You do not control the Holy Spirit. You allow the Holy Spirit to control you. You ask for God and the Holy Spirit to guide you and control you. You don't control anything. You might think you have control of your life here. But this is just an excerpt of time that you live on this earth before you go into eternity. You do not control your final days. God does. You need to ask him into your life. And you have to take up his Holy Spirit and follow and listen to his Holy Spirit. But to see the Spirit work is important. But your heart has to be in the right place. Again, I'll, I'll go back a couple seconds here and say, you know, we have a lot of people, and they say this, and I don't, I don't want to offend nobody, but I don't want to lie to you either. There's people sitting in each churches today that aren't going to make it to heaven. There's these well-known televangelists and pastors and, and just normal people, everybody, everyday people that aren't going to make it to heaven until they open their eyes and their hearts and they see the truth in the Scripture. Because coming to church and doing good deeds and all of these things and professing I am a Christian does not make you a Christian. It does not make you have the ability to be saved. You have to accept that and follow that from our Father in heaven. So Peter rebukes Simon in verse 21. He says, you can have no part or share in God's word because you... I misspelled that, so sorry. You are not right with God. Therefore, change your heart and your life. Turn from your wickedness. Plead with the Lord in hope that your wicked intent can be, can be forgiven. For I see your bitterness has poisoned you and evil has you in his chains. There's a song out there. It's called Brain, uh, Chain Breaker. Did I say that right? Chain Breaker. When I was reading this, and studying this this week, that's the song I, I listened to, and, I, and it came to my mind, man, chain break. What an amazing thing God is, is that he's a huge chain breaker. Whether it's drugs or whether it's not living your, your full life in entirety and, and following God, whether it's alcoholism or, or sex or, or whatever it is, God is that chain breaker. 
if you will just give up yourself and take up that cross, God is a chain breaker. But even Peter is rebuking Simon because his heart is not right. You can ask for a lot of things, but if your heart is not right to what God's wanting your heart to be or called to be, then you need to pray about it and think about it. Why you want the Holy Spirit is important. The Holy Spirit works to glorify God. In John 3.16, the Spirit of truth will speak through you. In Matthew 5.16, your light shine before others so that they may see good works and give, good, gl give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So the point of this is, is like I was saying earlier, is, is you can claim to be anything you want, but until you invest in God, until you invest in the blood sacrifice that he gave of his son, you are a false prophet. You are not living the life that God wants you to be. The Holy Spirit works to glorify God. That means if the Holy Spirit is in you, you will be working to glorify God. And then Matthew again it says, let your light shine before others. When God truly shines through us, the supernatural is clearly manifested in us. But God gets all the glory, not me. The things that I am doing, the things that are happening around me, you know, I had somebody say, well, you say, well, you did this and you did this. But I'm talking and, I, and I'm trying to change that because it's not me that's doing this. I am just the hand of God that is listening and manifesting things for God. God is working these out through Scott. He's using his vessel. He is using this man to do these things because why? Because I am listening to the Holy Spirit so that I can do and be justified in the things that I'm doing for God, not for Scott. Not for his wife, not for anybody else, but for God, our Omega, God, our King. All things are possible through God, not me and not you. When Jesus left this world, he left the task to us. His disciples, we are his disciples. But he told us to wait until God clothed us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, folks, that's where I'm getting to today is simply this. We need the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit shows up on the day of Pentecost and empowered the disciples to proclaim the gospel in a host of different languages in Acts 2, he demonstrated that genuine works of the Spirit leave no doubt about who should get the glory. He left there knowing it was God, of God, and it was God that transformed them. It wasn't anybody else. It wasn't the disciples. It was God himself. All of our focus needs to be on God, not ourselves. We can't let the devil, devil trap us into trying to lead the Spirit. We can't lead the Spirit. We need to bow to that authority and allow the Spirit to lead us. The Spirit communicates with us in many, many ways. He may lay someone on your heart. He may give you a song to move you. He may let you lose your job or allow your husband or wife to leave you, to move you to a place where you need to be so that you can listen to the Spirit. That he can draw you to the place that he wants you to be and to follow. Now, what is the right reason to have the Holy Spirit? Well, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4, 1 through, or 4 through 11, according to Paul, the Spirit works in an individual life for the common good of God. In Corinthians 12 through 14, the proper function of the church is God placed each of us in a specific location, and our task and our talents and our gift is to build up people around us and each out of the rest of the world. And it's this Holy Spirit who empowers us to fulfill God's calling upon our lives. It's not to tear down, it's not to bash, it's not to hurt, it's not to destroy. It's for us to feel and know and, and, and pick up that cross and empower others 
so they might do good works for God as well. My wish for you this morning, folks, my desire for you this morning is simply this. To know the presence of our God. To know the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. To start searching out that Holy Spirit because I am praying the day of Pentecost, the Sunday of Pentecost, that God is going to break down these walls and the barricades in this church and this community and we are going to know ourselves that God is alive and working in us. That is my prayer. Through this this week, through this and this time of being secluded at home or being limited at home, pick up your Bibles. Get on your knees and search out God and ask Him to bestow upon you the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Bow with me this morning. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Father, we come to you knowing that we can't be fake in front of you. We can't buy our way into anything, Father. We come to you announcing that you are our God. We are coming to you laying our lives before you and saying, Here, Lord, I'll pick up that cross and I'll follow you. Show me the gifts that you've given me. Give me the power and the peace to know that I'm on the right track for you, Father. And hold me true and steady to that course, Father. Give me that peace and that admiration for you. Give me that power and knowing that the Holy Spirit's working through me, Father. Help me to raise everybody else up. Help me to put me at the bottom of the pile and let them know that through me they will know, your lo they know you through my love, Father. Come guide me this week. Father, and if I'm not on the right path, Father, if my people aren't on the right path, touch them, move them, urge them. Let them know that you're calling, Father. That we all can make it through the gates of heaven and know the glory of God. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you for watching the FUMT Taft Media Ministry Worship Service. For more information, call us at 361-528-2131 or visit us online at taftmethodist.com. Our address is 302 McIntyre Avenue, Taft, Texas 78390. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our Media Ministry YouTube channel and like our Facebook page. Thank you for watching and may God bless you. The preceding program was made possible by the friends and partners of FEMC Taft Media Ministry.